Hi, thanks for joining. My name is Xavier Classens. I'm working at the Coabra Software Engineer. And today I would like to present a project I've been working uh, in the past years. The name is Mezan. It's a build system uh, that can really improve the, the maintainability of your project and speed up your builds. The first thing I'm going to present is how you can uh, download and install Mezen, what are the dependencies and how you can build uh, a simple example library with Mezen. The next step is to cross compile that uh, project uh, for a specific device. In this example, I'm going to present uh, using the Android NDK. And finally, you can um, we explore a bit how you can uh, declare the dependency of your project and present the unique features of Mezen uh, in that regard. And the final uh, topic uh, today is to present uh, the Mezen uh, developer of environment uh, that's going to really help you develop your project. The first thing, uh, I would like to give you the links uh, for the Mesen project. So here you have the old documentation on the mesonbuild.com website. Um, documentation is really something uh, we try uh, at the Mesen project uh, to be as complete as possible, to have every API documented, every feature documented. And um, if uh, if anything is not clear or uh, you have any question about how it works, you can always go to the GitHub project, uh, open an issue uh, or even open a, a contribution, a, a pull request contribution uh, in directly in GitHub and uh, we'll try to review that and uh, get it merged. It's an open source project, so everyone is uh, open to, to contribute there and um, we, we get contribution from really a variety of developers and everyone has their um, use cases and they can contribute and that's how the projects really grow up. Um, and finally, please follow the project uh, on Twitter. That's where we announce uh, releases and uh, we tweet about la, the, la, the new features, for example, and tricks. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is what are the dependencies of Mesen. The good news is we only have one. It's a Python tree. Um, so we depend on Python 3.6 um, up until uh, Mesen 0 0.61. Uh, after that release, uh, start, starting from 0 0.62, uh, we bumped the, the dependency to uh, Python 3.7. Um, in any case, most Linux di distribution and most uh, platforms already have uh, that uh, already have a Python 3.7 available. So I don't think that's going to be an issue for anyone, um, especially since we only depend on the standard library from Python. So we don't have any external modules you need to install using PyPy or anything. So that's really just a standard uh, Python installation, and that's all. Um, that's a dependency for Mesen, but uh, Mesen only configure your project. It generates a Ninja um, uh, a configuration, um, and for Ninja, uh, we need Ninja uh, 1.8.2. Um, that's the default backend, but we have other backends. Um, more specifically, we have a Visual Studio backend and a Xcode uh, backend for macOS. Uh, but those backends are less used and less tested. So uh, we really, really recommend uh, using the Ninja backends. But uh, uh, yeah. Um, so most Linux di distribution already has Mesen packaged, but it's often held. Uh, so if you want to enjoy the new features in the latest version and bug fix, uh, most of the time you will have to install it uh, yourself. Um, but the good news is it's really, really easy because PyPy, it's packaged in PyPy, so you can, with that simple command here, uh, you can install um, 
Mezen and Ninja in um, any any system you want. Uh, as long as you have Python 3, um, it's always available. So now let's dive in how you define uh, your build system. The first thing to know is um, the Mason build system definition goes inside a file named Mason.build. You write that file at the top um, of your source tree. And the first thing in that file you define is your project. What's the name of the project? What are the languages that's going to be used in that project? In our case, C or C++. Uh, what are the version of your project? Uh, the, the Mason version you depend on because you could be using features from uh, the latest ver Mason version, or you could be, you could want to keep compatibility with an older version. Um, and then you define what are the source files and the header files of your project. Um, we in the Mason project, we really we, you, you always list all your source files. Um, in your Mason.build file because we don't support uh, globbing, so specifying like star.c or star.h uh, files because that's slow. Um, if you have a really large project and you want to you make a, a modification in one file and want to rebuild it, um, it's, it's faster when Mason already knows exactly what are the files that are used by your project and can check only those files. Uh, globbing is going to be slower and also um, it ensures that if you add a new file, you have to modify your, you to add it inside your build, your Mason.build file so that uh, triggers a, re a reconfigure. Um, that's something we can't really do if you're globbing. Um, so yeah, so because because of that, a uh, build system that uses globbing needs to glob again every time you do a rebuild, and that's that's slower. And in the Mason uh, uh, project, we really focus on uh, on uh, uh, to make it as fast as possible to rebuild every time you make a, a, a change in the project. So even a really large project, if you modify just one file, it's going to the, to recompile it, and that's going to be really fast. Um, yeah, so I, here in the example, we mix uh, C and C++ files. That's perfectly fine. We can, um, Mason can build, um, um, can link together uh, uh, different languages as long as they are compatible like C and C++. And here, here we, bu we build a, a, an example a library. And you see that we don't specify if it's a static uh, library or a shared library, because that's going to be a user option. Um, so in your build definition, you just say that's a library, and user is going to, to, to choose between uh, static or shared, or even both. To build a project, um, you'd first configure it. To configure, you just run the, the Mason command with a build with the un, uh, only a single argument. It's the build directory. Uh, Mason always do an out of source tree uh, build. That means that it's not going to create any files inside your uh, source tree. It's going to put all the build files inside a single directory that you specify on the command line. By default, it's going to build shared libraries. But um, it has the the dash dash default library option where you can specify uh, if uh, you want a shared, a static, or even both. Um, building both libraries uh, is optimized uh, by Mason because it's only comp going to compile uh, source files once and do the link twice. Um, that's only possible if the C flags, for example, are the same for both. And, but most of the time it is. So that saves a lot of building time if you want both static and shared libraries. Um, now that we defined uh, a really simple uh, project that, that compiles a lab uh, library, uh, we can see how we can cross compile that uh, for a different uh, platform. 
In this example, I'm using the Android NDK uh, toolchain. And the first thing you need is to write a file. It looks like an ini file and it describes your toolchain. Um, as you can see here, the first section is a constant. Uh, tools are um, helpers to, to make the, to keep your file clean. Uh, as, as you can see, um, path where to look for uh, every, uh, for the tool chain, every, uh, the C through the, the C compiler, etc. All of those paths have a common prefix. And here we decided to have a, a, a constant that uh, defined that prefix once and we can re uh, reference to it in the rest of the file that uh, make it shorter. The next section defines for which platform you are building. In this case, the system is Android and the CPU architecture is uh, ARM64. Next section is properties. Uh, here we define the sys rules. Um, and as you can see here, there's a little trick. Uh, we can use a, a constant that we define tool chain and that's a, and we can um, have that special syntax with the slash operator that's going to uh, concat the path. So that's uh, really a, a short way to to put your um, your path uh, in in the file and keep it clean. And likewise in binary section, uh, the we, where we define the really the tool chain, so the the compilers uh, and um, AR, um, AR strip, etc. Um, all those paths are uh, prefixed by the toolchain constant. Now that we write that file, we can use it to compile the project. Uh, there is a simple uh, command line dash dash cross file, and then you pass the path to, to you the file. You can name it uh, how any uh, you can name it how you want. Um, most of the time it has the uh, txt extension, but that's not really um, the best extension for this uh, file format. But probably you want to have an any ex uh, file extens extension. Um, and as you can see here in the example, Mezan just um, takes um, the C and C++ compilers from the tool chain and compile the, the library. And the result is uh, a shared library that's uh, compiled for uh, ARM64. That cannot be run on my system, but you can then include that library in the Android project and uh, it's going to, to work. The next topic is dependencies. Um, so Every project has a lot of dependency, especially you see in C++ projects. You cannot write every code yourself. Um, here in a simple example, uh, we need an XML parser. And we use li uh, libxml2. And as you can see, we have a really simple way to uh, declare the dependency. Uh, it has a dependency function. Um, you pass the name of the dependency you want and Mason will look at uh, on the system. Um, so to look at dependency, Mezan has uh, many ways. One of them is PKG config, uh, well known in the GNOME world. Uh, PKG config are simple uh, files that describe what are the, the, where is the library, where is the include path, the C flags you need, and all the needed information for that dependency. Also, or what are the dependencies of the dependency recursively? Mes um, another way Mason has to find libraries is using CMake. Is the, 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 the principle is the same. Uh, CMake can define um, a dependency and what are the C flags needed for it. And Mason can read those files. Um, so once you have that dependency object, you can pass it to uh, your library uh, and it's going to link uh, against that, uh, that dependency. You can use uh, libxml2. The example just next to it, you can see 
that's a quick uh, <coughs> quick um, what are the logs from Mason? It, it shows that it found a PKG config and it found a libxml2 using PKG config. It says which version it found. But most of the time, and especially when you are cross compiling, uh, the dependency is not going to be found. Uh, because if you cross compile for a device, you cannot use a dependency from your Linux distribution. Uh, in our example, uh, we cannot use a libxml2 from uh, my laptop to, uh, to, to compile uh, an Android application. So as you can see, Mezan will tell you that the dependency is not found. Uh, we have um, a unique fe feature in Mezan to solve that, that issue. Um, it's called subprojects. So any uh, Mason projects can become a sub-project. Sub-projects are built together with your project. It, it, all it needs is to download the source code of the dependency. And it's going, as long as it's using Mason, it's going to configure and build that dependency together with your project. Um, uh, one, um, an, an, uh, an even better way for that is called WrapDB. It's a list of, of well-known projects that are using Mason or that we, uh, the Mason projects, um, maintain, uh, uh, maintain a port to Mason. And we have that list of projects that can be used uh, as a, a sub-project for uh, any dependency you need. So here in the example, you can see that uh, it found a uh, libxml2 inside of RockDB and it can download the tarbo and start configuring that uh, libxml2 uh, dependency for you. So as I said, any um, Mason project can be a sub-project, um, but you have to declare a few things in your project to be, to be able to use it as a sub-project. So here, after defining a, a library, we can declare a dependency. Um, so lib, lib example dep uh, is a, uh, we declare the dependency and we give, okay, we need to link to that library, but we also need uh, the include path. So that's the, the place where the compiler is going to look up for uh, header files. And we, in this example, we say that's the current directory where the the header files uh, are. The next step is overriding the dependency name. So here we, we tell Mason that um, we override the example dependency name uh, using that dependency we, de we declared. That means that um, from that point, anywhere you, de you, you want the example dependency, it's going to use that dependency you declared just here. Um, instead of looking that dependency on the, on the system. Uh, we can also um, generate a PKG config uh, file. Um, it's really easy because uh, Mason already knows uh, what are your C flags you need to compile that library, what are the, the dependency of that library. So it can generate that file all for you. Uh, it, as you can see, just a single line. Um, uh, now that we have a, a declared a, a, a library, we can use that library uh, as a dependency for an application, for example. So as I said, um, when you, uh, you look up for the example dependency, um, it's going to use the dependency you overridden. So it can uh, link uh, your, your executable with that example dependency and build them together um, in a single uh, configuration and build. Uh, so it, you don't have to install that uh, lib example on your system first and then uh, build your uh, example, your application. You can build them together in one step. Um, now, uh, if that dependency is something, for example, that you have uh, on GitHub, you can write a simple wrap file. A wrap file is, um, 
uh, uh, in a file, you can write uh, inside your subproject a folder at the root of your source code. Um, it tells um, it tells what uh, the first section it, uh, it tells where to download that dependency. In this case, we we say that that's uh, you have to clone Mason has to clone uh, a Git repository, but it can also be a, a tar a tarbo file or uh, other. Um, um, uh, it can be also um, CVS or SVN, uh, things like that, but most of people are using Git or Tarball nowadays. Uh, so here you have the, the GitHub link and the branch to clone. And that file tells Mezan that uh, that project provides the example dependency name. Um, so every time when, so when uh, Mezan look up for, the, uh, for that dependency, uh, and cannot find it on the system, it can uh, automatically, do thanks to that file, can automatically download or git clone the, the project and build it together with your project. Um, so all of that in one step automatically. And yeah, that system can, can, can really get wild. Uh, the, the screenshot here is from uh, GStreamer project. It's the multimedia um, framework um, that has a lot of dependencies. And all those dependencies are ported to Mezan already, or most of them. Uh, so you can build a GStreamer with, you can, here in this example, I've been across uh, compiling GStreamer for Windows with no um, dependency uh, from the system at all. So it's going to build every, every, everything there is going to be configured and built together with GStreamer in a single step. Um, it's going to download all those sub-projects uh, by, by, by himself. And finally, the Mason developer environment. Um, that's something that many projects has as a custom script that does values that does does it differently. Mason try to um, make it common to all the all Mason projects. So what what does it do? Um, you have the command line Mason devonv. You pass it the build directory and it it opens a, a shell there. And in that shell, it defines various environment variables. And for example, it, it sets the path uh, variable uh, to location where you build, uh, where it builds um, your application. So um, in, the, in this example, you have the app uh, executable and you can call it uh, directly and going to find it because inside your build directory because it has set the path. So even if the, the application is not built at the top of your build directory, it's going to find it. And likewise, uh, Mezan sets LD library path. So um, if, you, if, you, if you have a, a shared library, for example, inside your build directory and you want to start an application that links on it, um, the linker is going to find it thanks to that environment. Um, by the way, that's uh, platform specific, but Mezan knows what is your platform. So on um, on Windows, for example, that's going to be path and not LD uh, library path. Um, and the most important is that you can extend that uh, directly from your Mezan.build file uh, to define your own environment variables you need uh, because your projects uh, likely um, needs to find some data files or some some file that gets installed usually installed on your system but you don't want to install on the system when you are developing you want to use in in place uh, from the source tree or from the the build tree um, so here you can define that uh, some any of our environment uh, variable in your environment that your project is going to 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 use to find those files and it is in this example, so you see a Mason that at Devonv, uh, we define the live embedded events uh, example variables, and we said we give it a list of paths, and as you can see, Mason is going to know um, how to join those paths 
in the platform specific way. So on, on Unix, that's with a colon uh, character and on Windows, that's a semicolon. So Maison is going to join them for you. Uh, thanks you for your, your thanks you for watching, and please, um, if you have any question uh, or if you you want to to give it a try, please reach out. Uh, we met the Maison project has an, an IRC uh, uh, channel. Uh, it's uh, the it's a Maison built on uh, LibreChat, um, and. Um, also, we have a GitHub discussion enabled on the on the project. So please uh, open an issue or discussion if you have anything you want, or contact us on Twitter or any other way. Thank you and um, goodbye.